his heart. Do you notice anything interesting about the title slide? Got any logo? Oh, you can be seen. Quantum. Quantum plus go down and have that. Exactly. <laughs> Gary, Paul, and Tommy also don't know that. <laughs> I asked them, what is QPC? <laughs> Gary didn't know. Gary, Paul, and Tommy all oh, wow. know. So did you just make that up or? No, no. Uh, I googled QPC logo. Oh, alright. And I found it. I'm surprised you were rich never, never found it either. QPC logo, and then I clicked on images. And there it was. A little, a little exciting. Do you have to go to the description? Oh, no, no, I didn't. So going to the left instead of everybody else that go to the right. Uh, I hope That's it's funny. fine. Yeah. No, I, I guess so. I guess so. I never really thought about it. <clears throat> okay, shall we? Shall we start? So happy Thursday, everyone. My name is Paul Laramie. I'm presenting this talk on behalf of Richard Roberts, who did the real work. He's a PhD student that recently submitted his thesis, and now he's entered the real world and was not attending the conference, so I'm going to hopefully do as good of a job as Rich would if he was presenting. It's called Smart Brushing for Parallel Coordinates, and it's a collaboration between Swansea University and a company called QPC. Quality plus call scan. <laughs> so two, no, three years ago now, Renata Raidu at the IEEE News Conference 2015 in Chicago showed this image to the audience on her talk on parallel coordinates. And we, the audience looked at this image, and I think that the idea behind this paper flashed through the, the heads of several of the audience members, including myself. But this image screams for the idea that's in, embedded in this paper, which is the smart brushing technique. If you look at this nice figure, all the, the state-of-the-art brushing at the time was laid out so probing, where we click on a single point in parallel coordinates, area brushes, where we, we click on two points to define a brush, a lasso brush also defined by two points, composite brushing, and then angular brushing, which is defined by three points. It's so obvious that this could be extended to arbitrary points and arbitrary patterns by looking at this image. At least that's what I thought at the time. So really, what the user should be able to do is click on any number of points and define some sort of multivariate or, or high-dimensional pattern, like a wave pattern or a multivariate pattern, in the parallel coordinate space in order to define a brush. And then they should be able to take that object, that high-dimensional brush, and just arbitrarily move it around in parallel coordinate space. And that is the, the essence behind what we're going to talk about today. And that's what it looks like. So that's when, you, when we extend this concept to an arbitrary number of axes and an arbitrary number of points. We call it higher order brushing. We call brushing based on a single point, zero order brushing. Brushing based on two points, first order brushing. Then we have composite first order brushing and second order brushing, which is the angular brushing. What we introduce essentially is higher order brushing, 
and then several enhancements to the basic higher order brushing concept. So a little overview of the talk, the whole talk, which I'm going to mention related work. We're going to mention the call center data, which involves our collaboration with QPC, because this is actually an industry-driven project. This is not an ivory tower project. We're going to talk about sketch-based brushing, which includes the higher water brushing, translation operations, logical, logical operations and examples. And then we're going to introduce the idea of smart brushing, which is data-guided brushing. So dynamic brush lifts, smart brush edges, smart axis scaling, and smart automatic brushing. And we'll also mention a few complementary user options, hopefully, uh, in the time span. The paper definitely includes a case study, a full case study and domain expert feedback, which we will mention today. <clears throat> So I know what everybody in the audience, at least in the biz audience, will be thinking, which is, but hey, you can already do higher order brushing in XMDV, for example. And theoretically, that is true. Theoretically, you can do composite first order brushing. You can, you can combine brushes across axes. But in previous methods, it's very tedious, and it's very error prone, and it's, it's it requires a lot of manual labor. It's also not, not intuitive. And also, the user is not able to simply grab hold of the higher order brush and arbitrarily slide it through the n dimensional space. That's just simply not possible. But this topic go, dates back to 1980, the topic of parallel coordinates brushing. We include 20 references in the paper. There's another subsection called touch-based brushing interaction, which involves touchscreen devices, and we mentioned four previous papers. And then, of course, there's the classic XMDV uh, software tool uh, that includes composite brushing. Some background on the data that we evaluate or we use in our examples and that we uh, is supplied by our call center partner. So the call center partner is called QPC. And they developed a database that archives every event that occurs inside of a call center. So every time a person calls, the phone number that calls, the time that they call, the duration of the call, and then the events that typically occur during a call center call. The first stage is the IVR, which is the interactive voice menu that you navigate whenever you call a call center. Then you put on hold, typically, after you've made your choices. Then, if you're lucky, you speak to an agent. And the agent might put you on hold as well. Wow, it's already six and a half minutes. That's crazy. Okay, that's really crazy. And, and there, are, there could be other agent events and so on. And there are two special, special characteristics. One is called the customer effort score, which is a, a metric that tries to evaluate how much effort a customer has put into their phone call, which is very important to QPC. And there is a net, something called a net promoter score, which is a score, a feedback rating that a user or a caller may provide after the phone call to, to assess their own experience, whether or not they're happy or unhappy. So I'm going to switch to the demo video, actually. <clears throat> See. I don't think it'll be this high res in the, in the conference. This demo video shows some of the dynamic properties of this higher order brushing yeah, concept. Yeah, the whole interaction with the feedback mechanism. Oh, that's so it's smooth and simple. The two volumes.
So this is a summary of the data description. You can see the start time of the call on the first axis, the IVR duration on the second axis, how long the customers wait for on the third axis, and each poly line represents one call in the events. And this is a summary of the, the higher order brushing conceptually, which is based on an arbitrary number of points. The user just simply clicks on the axes and the ranges are automatically defined. Here's the higher order brushing in action. So the user has clicked on these first two axes, the call duration, and then they can click on an arbitrary number of axes. They can pick up the brush and move it around to arbitrary locations. And the scene updates automatically with the filtered call lines. They can take an individual segment and drag it up and down. This is the user dynamically uh, defining their higher order brushing and the higher order brush through the, through the polylines. And they're dynamically adjusting the, the brush range, the brush interval range to be more or less selective or to include or exclude more phone calls. Now that's a special kind of pattern. That's a special kind of pattern that identifies a new class of abandoned calls that were previously unidentified. And those are calls with an agent duration of less than five seconds. So we classify that as, as an abandoned call, which is something that QPC is very, very interested in, identifying the properties of abandoned calls. This is an example of the user pinning two points down and then doing a left to right translation of the higher order brush across axes. And it's a kind of low pass filter. This is also, a, this is the combination of two higher order brushes, a logical or. So in this case, the polylines could be passing through this brush interval range or this brush, brush interval range defined by this, this top higher order brush. And they're also demonstrating priority re rendering here, so the user can click on any node in any interval range, and then those, those polylines are rendered last. This is a little comparison, a very, very brief comparison of what it's like to try to do higher order brushing with our tool and higher order brushing with, with MDB, with, which is composite one-dimensional brushing. It's, it's not so easy, it's not really designed for that kind of interaction and that kind of exploration. These are enhancements to the basic idea of higher order brushing. So we have a few different things that we've added on to make the experience better. One's called a smart edge. So this edge dynamically updates depending on the density of the poly lines that are in the background. We've added these brush interval range glyphs. So these are small angular histograms that reflect the density and the direction of the average polylines passing through the, the bins. For, for very, those are very helpful for very large data sets and heavy overplotting. And the, the, di the brush interval range glyph is dynamic. So the user can move it up and down expand or contract its extent. And there are also two arrow glyphs above and below the brush interval range that point to where the polylines are actually intersecting that axis. So if there are lots of polylines below the brush interval range, the arrow will point downwards and the arrows will change and they'll dynamically update depending on where that brush interval range is defined. We also have something called smart axis scaling. So as soon as we've defined a brush interval range, we can then zoom in on any, on any, any axis, also called dimensional zooming. And that's something we call smart axis brushing. And the original polylines are still rendered in context. So they're rendered off screen in context. So we can know. It's a very nice visualization on the screen. Great. I'll go to room now, so we'll do oh, some computation. OK. Sure, yeah, you can. Is it OK if I just, uh, I do, let's do it all. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, I guess I should finish. <laughs> um, oh, you avoided the questions you this way. Take some time? <clears throat> I forgot to write down the stop time, actually. Is, uh, 13 minutes, I think. 13 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Pause. Anyways, uh, we have to stop. Because the room is reserved. At least it's still helpful. Um, yeah. How long do you have? Uh, it's, it's the, the slot is 20 minutes total. Like uh, questions or feedback? Yeah, yeah. If you have questions or feedback or anything, uh, definitely. But could you actually save the patterns? Like you have a preset pattern and put the software. Well, we have we have something called auto complete, which makes suggestions for patterns. Because right. yeah. I thought like the abandoned call pattern or something, you set a drawing of the time, just like oh. Yeah, yeah. We also have a feature that lets the user export uh, the call records that they find. So if they're exploring, they can say save these call records. It could be, it could be a question about the um, access all the dependent as well. Yeah. It's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, the access all the Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah.